good morning and welcome everybody. My name is Brett Schonsenbach. I'm the President and CEO of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to welcome you to our February Rising Star of the Month breakfast. To start, we always like to um, kind of ground ourselves on what the mission of the Rising Star of the Month is. So um, I'm going to read it if you would like on the back of your little program. If you'd like to follow along, we do have it printed there for you. So the mission of the Rising Star of the Month is to bring the community together to honor our local high school seniors for demonstrating character, integrity, love of learning, involvement in school and community activities, and or the ability to overcome challenging life circumstances without compromising their education. The core of the Rising Star of the Month is the student who makes a difference in their home, school, and community with sincerity and passion. A, a special sponsor that I'm asking to come up today, uh, he has been with us since the very beginning, but he's also the chair of the board for the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce this year, so I'd like him to just come up and say a couple words, and that's Mr. J.R. Phillips. Hey, thank you guys. I just want to congratulate all three students on behalf of the membership and on behalf of the board of directors. Really proud of you guys. Um, recognition that I'm sure we're going to hear today is very well deserved. Um, relative to this this type of recognition, though, I do want to say it's 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 one thing to get academic awards and and recognition. It's one thing to get ath athletic recognition and um, consideration. Um, we all love that stuff. But today you're going to be recognized for showing and demonstrating, like the mission statement said, a high level of character and a real concern for your community. And that's what the Chamber is all about, is making the community a better, stronger place. So congratulations. I'd like to kick it off and bring up the principal of Carlsbad High School, Julie Redfield. Good morning. Um, thank you, Chamber of Commerce, for this amazing event and all the sponsors and scholarships. This is by far the best day of our year. Um, every month we get to be here and we get to recognize some amazing individuals, so congratulations to the recipients. And I have the pleasure today of introducing Sophia Tamayo uh, for Carlsbad High School. I have known Sophia on a personal level since she was five years old, and I have watched her go through her uh, education from Magnolia to Valley to Carlsbad High, and now to be an amazing senior representing Carlsbad. Um, Sophia is a Lancer through and through. If you walk on our campus, I think I see her probably at least three times a day. We have a really big campus, but she's everywhere. And she always is bubbly, always has a smile, and part of our attributes is being a Lancer is being loyal, being appreciative, being respectful, being scholarly. Like she is, she exudes everything. And she truly, I think, she definitely bleeds purple. Like she is, she is a true Lancer. And so I just love having her on campus. Uh, she is involved, probably, I'm gonna just say a few, you're gonna hear a whole lot more of what she's involved with from Miss Dindy and Sophia herself. But just to name a few, she's involved with our robotics team, speech and debate, CHS TV. She's a representative on our superintendent's advisory council and she has gone through our AVID program. Just to name a few, but that's pretty amazing to be so busy. She's able to organize her time, her management, and be successful in anything she puts her mind to. Um, so I asked three of her teachers, uh, just to give me a little idea of what they see in the character of Sophia on a daily basis. Miss Catlett, her speech and debate coach, said Sophia, has compassion and grace in the classroom. She embodies leadership role in aiding her teammates. Ms. Catlett has observed her dedication to her studies, her craft, and her community, and is continually impressed by her ability to render any situation as resolvable and being very inclusive. Mr. Spanier, avid teacher, Sophia is a leader on our campus in the most important way, leading by example. In AVID, she supports her peers in cooperative and collaborative work. In English class, she's also taking English 4 AP. She's a risk taker with her analysis and in her writing. It is clear that Sophia is guided, not by the need to acquire points to make a grade, but by her curiosity and desire to improve. 
And then her APE con, see she is very, very busy, but us also taking very rigorous courses. Sophia's APE con teacher, Mr. Hendricks, said Sophia is charismatic, joyful, positive, intelligent, and creative, and a pleasure to have in class. But really, with Sophia's diligence, her work ethic, I do not put anything past her. Uh, she would like to go in the field of engineering. She's going to talk a little bit more of that. And just what she's role modeled since I've known her since five years old growing up in this community, she is going to achieve anything she puts her mind to. So it is my great pleasure to introduce Sophia to my Hello, my name is Sophia Tamayo, and I want to thank you to the people who have let me be here. My mom, my grandma, Miss Redfield, of course, for those amazing words, Miss Howard and Miss Denny for nominating me, and the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this amazing event, and I'm greatly honored to be here. I am the eldest of four children, and at a young age, I was instilled pride in being from Puebla and Oaxaca, two southern regions in Mexico where my family is from. And I'm currently the president of Mana Chapter at Carlsbad High which is a program dedicated to closing the educational gap among Latina girls. I have organized scholarship information and also connected our high school MANA students with the middle school chapter. MANA provided me a scholarship to participate in Sally Wright's coding program at UCSD, and I fell in love. Thus, I joined robotics in order to further my interest in STEM, which has been an incredible opportunity that the Carlsbad Unified District provides. Fun fact. Carlsbad High has the most amount of Latinas in robotics compared to any other school in the San Diego region. We have a whopping four. <laughs> <laughs> robotics has severe underrepresentation of girls and especially Latino and black students. And I found that many students were resistant to join because robotics can be an intimidating extracurricular. Thus, I created Road to Code, where I taught introductionary level coding for free over Zoom. In the past, I've experienced the heartbreak of being unable to participate in STEM activities because it can often be costly. Thus, I do not want a price tag preventing someone else from learning or reaching their goals. Another part of making STEM more inclusive is building the confidence of younger students. Thus, I created a web series hi highlighting Carlsbad High's robotics teams with the intention of making robotics less intimidating and sparking the curiosity of future engineers. I'm proud to say that over 104 students in the Carlsbad Unified School District have become viewers of this program. And I'm extremely proud of creating the representation I wish I would have seen when I was younger. In April of 2023, I was honored to be a Dean's List finalist for FTC Robotics, an award that recognizes a participant's technical, academic, outreach, and leadership. Less than 1% of robotics members receive this honor. But even after winning and attending the World Championships, I couldn't help but feel that I didn't deserve it. Imposter syndrome made me feel that I had been a form of affirmative action, because I've heard those comments that certain groups are given lower standards in comparison to others. I chose to listen to that voice, even though I've already completed all the math levels at Carlsbad High, and that continue making people feel welcomed and cared for in and outside of robotics. Now, months later, I've used these former feelings as fuel to make robotics even more welcoming and approachable. I do not want any more students feeling that they do not belong or that they do not deserve to succeed. I plan to study mechanical engineering at Harvey Mudd College or Cal Poly San Luis Obispo to further my interest and continue uplifting people as I progress in my educational journey. Thank you for your time. Wow. Yeah. So, Sophia. <clears throat> um, amazing story. I loved how everybody who talked about you and shared about you talked about how you lead by example and, and how um, inclusive you are. Um, I loved your story about how like you started to develop this passion for STEM and for the robotics and coding and then you immediately turn that around to help others you know possibly get that same interest that same desire that same passion and you know teaching coding over zoom I can't imagine anything more difficult <laughs> than, that could exist but that over 104 students participated and, and came to, to learn um, is amazing. Um, I think it was your mom who said, you constantly bring back things that you learn and share with others, right? And that, that kind of leadership, that kind of, you know, always going beyond yourself is so um, amazing. Uh, as she also said that you make other people feel valued. And that came through with everything that was shared about you and by you. 
Um, it's just such a great example of the type of people a community needs to, to thrive and that a community values everything that you're doing. It was just so beautiful. Um, and as a first generation college student, you know, you are just elevating yourself and pulling everybody up around you. It was a beautiful story. Thank you so much for sharing today. Good morning. My name is Josh Way. I'm the principal at Sage Creek High School. Congratulations. What an amazing uh, experience you've had and, and, and pulling students and others um, into, into your field of success. And so um, it's a perfect segue into the student that we're going to share. Uh, and I'm going to introduce you here, um, Sage Creek High School, uh, Callie Chan. She, um, you know, at Sage Creek, we, we certainly have this, this high expectation of this high standard of academic achievement. And one of the things, we, but what we also strive for and we encourage students that we also want a multi-dimensional, multi-faceted learner. And, and that's exactly what uh, our student represents. Not only some of the highest academic achievement that I've seen, 4.16 GPA. I mean, her class load this year is um, just, just AP Calc, AP English, AP Chem, AP Gov, and Marine Science. Um, are you sure you should even be here right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it, and, and, and straight A's all the way, all the way through, if you look at that, all the way from Hope Elementary through Calavera um, and up through Sage Creek. Not only is her academic standards um, impressive, her academic achievement impressive, but she's also an athlete on our girls' soccer team and, and a student leader. One of the things that our staff would say is that um, it's her ability to connect with others. And what some of her teachers, again, this is just some of the responses from some of her teachers that um, Kalia is one of the most determined students I've worked with at Sage. She's reliable and resilient and has worked hard for herself and her family. She's the proud daughter of Korean immigrants, leads by example on the field, in school, and in the community. She has a quiet confidence about her, which you're going to uh, learn a little bit more in a minute, and is very compassionate. One of uh, her... I, She's a member of our Link Crew, and Link Crew is a program that juniors and seniors take time out of their summer to plan an orientation and a mentorship program throughout the entire year for all of our incoming ninth graders. So every ninth grader gets a junior or senior mentor. And so they, they dedicate their summer to this event. And when I was talking to one of her leadership, uh, one of her Link Crew advisors, she said something that really resonated. We have a saying with our staff members, is every Bobcat, every day. It's a reminder to us, that like every day we should be picking up one student, one staff member. Um, and that's, what, that's kind of our mantra as a staff. And yet, yet, the, yet our students, every once in a while you'll get a student that'll come along and does that. And during, she would say that during, um, during the Link Crew events, while all the students are kind of grabbing for the microphone, like many of us want to talk and be out in front speaking, she'll go out and make sure that every student has the name tag. Every student knows where they need to go. Every student has the group that they're supposed to be in and making sure that they're looking out for everybody in that quiet confidence um, that we all look forward, uh, that we all need, and that we all need. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our student, uh, Kalia Chan, and her family, Brian and Sung Lee, and also her counselor, Mr. Freddie Delgado. Come on up. Hi, everyone. My name is Kalia Chan. I'm here with my mom, uh, Sung Lee Chan, my dad, Brian Chan. Uh, my counselor, Mr. Delgado, and my principal, Dr. Wei. Uh, as I reflect on my time here at Sage Creek, I've been fortunate enough to be in a position where I'm involved in various initiatives aimed at fostering and sense of belonging and togetherness among my classmates. As vice president of Link Crew, a program created to welcome and reassure incoming freshmen, I have a role in creating a safe space. I've also had the opportunity to be a part of the student council as secretary for the last four years. Uh, working to represent the interests of my peers and keeping the bonds between my graduating class strong. It's been incredibly rewarding to see new bonds forming and helping to establish a foundation based on positivity and community for my school. What inspired me to take on these roles is my own experience growing up as a Korean American in Carlsbad. Throughout my childhood, I barely had any Asian classmates, especially Koreans who I could bond with. This lack of representation sometimes left me feeling alienated and disconnected since the majority of my peers held different social and cultural backgrounds and perspectives. But because of this, I quickly appreciated the importance of sharing and listening to other people's stories. 
It was this realization that pushed me to be in a position where I could share my ideas and make sure no one else felt indifferent from someone else. From this experience, I've learned that we are stronger as a community. I've realized the importance of taking on roles that actively participate and contribute. There are so many aspects of a community to be discovered and perspectives to be cherished. Um, and I've witnessed firsthand the positive impacts of feeling belonged. As I take a step into a new chapter of my life, I hope I can continue to influence the environment around me. I've applied to most of the UC schools, some Cal States, and a couple of out-of-state universities, but I'm still waiting to hear back. Although my future is unclear, wherever I go, I want to study biology and pre-med. The endless possibilities and discoveries of our own body systems combined with the growing technology, there is so much opportunity to hear, heal and cure the people that we couldn't before. I'm super grateful for this opportunity and glad I had the chance to speak to you all today. Thank you, Chamber of Commerce, for hosting, and thank you, everyone, for listening to my story. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Another great example of leading uh, leadership by example from you. I, I loved especially, though, the, how you connect. You connect with people, um, and everybody shared that about you. You shared how challenging it was growing up and feeling disconnected from people around you, not having other Korean Americans, other Asian students, but that you wanted to make other people understand the value of belonging and, and connecting. And so you've gone out of your way to do that. The Link Crew example was, was amazing. Um, it was said about you how you, you uh, you literally care about others. You're not just, you know, going through and trying to hog the microphone and be a leader like from a podium. You're actually out there with the people trying to help them make sure that they can participate fully. Um, and your, I think it was your teacher um, em emphasized how you empathize with everybody and, and just see things from their perspective. It was really just a touching story and I loved how you talked about you know, your, your goal is to create safe spaces for others. So, again, just such a beautiful example of what a community needs and will help a community thrive. So, very blessed to have you today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Way, Ms. Redfield. Thank you guys very much for all you do for the Carlsbad community, your beautiful uh, staff, and, and these wonderful rising stars. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here and celebrating the accomplishments of these incredible, aspiring youth. My name is Kirby Scarborough, and on the behalf of Major General Peggy Combs, uh, 16th President of Army and Navy Academy, uh, I am here as her representative, where I serve as the Director of Leadership Development and Virtue. Uh, this is my village to the left, and they are very honored to be here as well. Our Academy serves as one of the oldest academic institutions here in San Diego County. We have a noble mission that has existed for over 114 years, to educate, mentor, and develop good character and leadership in young men. I would like to take a moment to share a few of the remarkable achievements of one of our finest young men. Cadet Major William Kerwin is a senior that hails from Washington, D.C. Will currently serves as the president of the Honor Council, where he boldly governs a select community through weekly honor court proceedings. He also serves as the Corps' Leadership Development and Virtues Officer, identifying solutions to provide justice while he upholds the Academy's values and traditions. Throughout his tenure at the Academy, Will Kerwin has always remained a trusted leader. And this morning, we want to honor that transformation by nominating you as one of Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce Rising Stars. Will, on the behalf of Major General Combs, uh, this community of leaders, the Corps cadets, and your family, we want to take time to congratulate you on your accomplishments and encourage you to continue to make a difference in this world. Warrior proud, warrior strong. Now I would like to take, I would like to ask Will, his counselor, and the warrior Ohana to come up and share a few words of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Good morning folks, thanks for having me. Uh, it really is an honor to be here. Uh, I can't be more thankful that I have this opportunity to, to speak in front of you all. Uh, you're going to have to bear with me, I have a lot of people to thank. <laughs> but first off, I'd like to thank, of course, Lieutenant Colonel Scarborough. Um, I've been at the Academy three years, and he's been someone that 
I've been relying on for three years. He's been a mentor to me. He's been such a big part of my life, and I really can't thank him enough for being here. Uh, I'd also like to thank Ms. Maya Ramirez, our Dean of Academics, my cross-country coach, and someone who I rely on every day. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Morocco, my, uh, uh, my, my boss, essentially. <laughs> um, and Mr. Hughes, my counselor, as well as Mr. Thaler uh, and Ms. Schneider, also here to help me. Um, you heard Lieutenant Colonel Scarborough talk a little bit about what I've done well at the Academy, my accomplishments, but I'd like to take a second to, to talk about my, my journey getting here and a little bit of the struggles I've, I've gone through. I mean, it would be disingenuous of me to say that I've had a very, very hard life. Uh, I've had a roof over my head, I've had food on my plate, I've had a mom who loves me, but where things get difficult is my relationship with my father. Um, my mom and dad were never married, so I'd only ever see him on weekends. And when I would see him, he'd be buried in his work. He was a very busy guy, so we'd be at the dining table and he'd be on a phone call instead of talking to me, or instead of going out and throwing a football, he'd be responding to emails. And that, for me, is was something very difficult for me because those weekends turned into every other weekend and turned into once a month and I was 10, 11 years old, I saw him five times in a year. And you don't need me to tell you what impact that has on a child. Um, but I will tell you a little bit about what specifically it did for me. Uh, it led me down a very dark path. Before coming here, um, I was probably 13, 14, 15 years old and I was doing everything wrong. I didn't have anyone to guide me. Uh, my mom, I love her very much, but she was working a lot of the time, so there's a lot of time I spent at home alone. And when you're a teenager and you're alone and the only influence you have are bad ones, you, you tend to make bad decisions. Um, I got involved with drugs, uh, I was skipping school, I was disrespecting my parents. I mean, every time I would see my dad, I would go to his house angry and I'd leave angry. There wouldn't be a weekend where we wouldn't leave without a screaming match. Um, and it all kind of culminated in my freshman year. Uh, the second half of that year, my, my GPA was a 0 0.83. 0 0.83. Let me break that down. In nine classes, <laughs> I had seven Fs, a B in Spanish, and a C in art. Um, so it's safe to say I hit rock bottom. But before I got there, my dad, and I'll never forget this, I went over to his house, and he sat me down, and he said, if you don't want to see me, I don't want to see you. I don't know if you understand what that means to a child to hear that, but I was 15 years old and what I heard is that my dad doesn't love me. What I heard is that I'm a failure and that I'm not deserving of, of his help, of his support and his mentorship. And that kind of sparked a change in me. It, it made me decide to move across country, to leave everything I know behind and, and start over at a military boarding school 3,000 miles away from home. And it took a while, it took the better part of a semester for me to get my food under me, but I did. Uh, I turned myself around and in the three years I've been here, uh, I've been on the Dean's List every single year. Uh, I went from all F's to all A's and a couple B's, but we can ignore those. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I really took away from it is that no matter who you are, the greatest thing you could ever do in life is be a parent. The greatest thing you could ever do is be a dad, be a mom. And you don't know what a child is going through away from home, at home, at school. Take the time to check in on everybody you know. Because you don't know when their moment could be their last. You don't know what they could decide to do tomorrow. You don't know what someone else could decide to do to them tomorrow. So enjoy what you have and be there for someone. Because no matter how well they're doing academically, mentally, how well you think they're doing, they always need help. They might not ask for it, they might not say thank you, but they appreciate it. Um, and since coming here, I've, I've kind of, I've grown and I've apologized to my dad, he's apologized to me and we're on much better terms now. Uh, I love the guy, but it was, it was a hard journey getting here. And now I can only be thankful for it because now it's only done me well. Um, like every other kid in the state, I'm waiting for the UCs to call me back with the application. <laughs> so I don't know where I'm going to college yet, but uh, I'll figure it out soon enough, and I can't be thankful enough for this opportunity to talk to you all and to be able to, to receive such a big honor. Thank you very much. Will, um, thank you for 
being real and sharing all that stuff. I mean, our hearts were breaking listening to, you know, what you went through um, as a teen and as a child. Um, and then how you've overcome it, you know, that obviously the um, academic part is like super impressive. It's like, wow, to go from, you know, basically a zero GPA to Dean's List is so impressive. But what's really impressive is what you've become character-wise to come from a place where you didn't feel that kind of love and support in your own nuclear family to now you are developing leaders and helping other people feel loved and valued in, uh, in, in your school environment. Um, and what you said about you know the greatest thing we can accomplish as, as a parent, I mean, that was just powerful. Um, and kudos for you for reconciling with your dad. That could not have been easy um, in that, you know, you know, going through that. Uh, but, um, you know, obviously the other things were shared about you, like grit and determination. Um, and that just exudes where you've come in, in a really a short period of time from your freshman year to now. Uh, it's absolutely tremendous. So, um and ultimately, what you said was, you know, be there for somebody else. It was powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we heard today from future um, engineers, uh, doctors, and uh, Will's interested in international business, so, which is close to our heart here at the chamber, for sure. Um, you know, and so I will tell you honestly, one of the reasons we do this program, students, is because we know you're going to, you know, you'll go somewhere to do college, but we want you to come back. You know, come back to North County, come back to Carlsbad, because your, your star is going to shine brightly. You're going to make, you're already making an impact, but you're going to continue to make impact for generations. So we would love to have you back in our community, love to have you back here, if at all possible. So that's one of the reasons we do this.